Welcome to the first of a series of slideshows that will explain exciting recent developments in stress theory that promise revolutionary advances in medicine and biology. The recently discovered mammalian stress mechanism enables the unified theory of medicine that was postulated by Hans Selye more than 60 years ago. Selye's revolutionary theory has always promised a new era of health, longevity, prosperity, and freedom from the eternal scourge of disease and premature death. But until now, it was useless without a testable mechanism that explains how it works. The stress mechanism will, su will surpass the significance of DNA because it will elevate medicine from an art based on experiment to a science founded on theory. It explains the nature of physiology, pharmacology, and disease, including cancer, adult respiratory distress syndrome, multi-organ failure syndrome, eclampsia, pneumonia, influenza, and asthma. It confers a simple, safe, safe, comfortable treatments. It enables the alteration of anesthetic technique to optimize surgical safety, efficiency, and patient comfort. It confers control of epidemics. It provides immense opportunity for efficient and profitable pharmaceutical research. Its implications exceed the bounds of medicine. It explains how DNA genetic information is converted into structural development. It thereby provides the final missing cog in the machinery of life that confers a previously unanticipated unified theory of biology that explains the origin and nature of life with implications hitherto confined to the realm of science fiction. At long last, the very secret of life may be at hand. This first sl slideshow will review the history of stress theory and it will be followed by a, a series of brief presentations that explain the operation of the stress mechanism. I would like to dedicate these slideshows to Dr. Johannes Rodin, whose lectures on stress theory to more than 5,000 medical students ultimately inspired the discovery of the mammalian stress mechanism. Were it not for him, the stress mechanism would have remained undiscovered for years to come. Sadly, Dr. Rodin passed away in 2004, only a few years before his dream was fulfilled. He was a magnificent gentleman and scholar as well as a famous researcher, and he would have been gratified to see that his efforts were not in vain. May his memory endure. The story of stress theory exemplifies the pattern of scientific advance postulated by Thomas Kuhn in his famous book, The Structure of Scientific Revolutions. Kuhn described how major advances in scientific theory are separated by prolonged intervals of normal science, where researchers toil in the context of a prevailing paradigm. As fresh evidence accumulates, the shortcomings of the prevailing paradigm become increasingly obvious and complex rationalizations become necessary. Eventually, a new theory replaces the exhausted paradigm, reinvigorates research, and makes the world look different. Kuhn observed that most important scientific advances are contributed by amateurs working outside the field and that they are seldom embraced by experts for many years. Today, Hans Selye is seldom mentioned, but his and his important ideas are misrepresented or forgotten. But within living memory, he was considered to be the most important medical theorist and researcher in the world. Shortly before the discovery of DNA, Selye hypothesized that a single mechanism explains physiology, pathology, and stress. He believed that the discovery of this mechanism would elevate medicine from an art based on experiment to a true science founded on theory and revolutionize medical treatments and pharmaceutical development. Selye's ideas became known as stress theory and his hypothetical mechanism became known as the stress mechanism. Soon after Selye proposed stress theory, the unprecedented discovery of DNA inspired excitement that is now difficult to perceive. Many believed that the secret of life was close, and they anticipated that Selye's mechanism works closely with DNA 
to convert genetic information into complex structures, whereupon DNA would resume quiescence while the stress mechanism remained active for the remainder of life to maintain and repair mature anatomical structures. These compelling ideas, which were never disproved, inspired an intense but fruitless and frustrating international search for the stress mechanism that lasted 30 years and consumed hundreds of research careers, thousands of tortured test animals, and millions of dollars. Stress researchers developed two important theories to explain the nature of Celia's mechanism. They knew that capillary surface area is greater than all other vessels combined and that capillary turbulence, pressure, and flow are all minimal, so they, they, they postulated that a submicroscopic capillary gate mechanism regulates capillary flow. This became known as capillary gate theory. They postulated that a single mechanism orchestrates the orderly sequence of tissue repair. This became known as tissue repair theory. They also suspected that the vascular endothelium was the focus of stress mechanism activity because it insulates blood from extravascular tissues, and they suspected that the autonomic nervous system regulates stress, stress mechanism activity. As we shall see, all these ideas anticipated various elements of the mammalian stress mechanism. In retrospect, the stress researchers resembled Jules Verne planning a trip to the moon before rockets were invented. The mammalian stress mechanism is more complex and counterintuitive than anyone anticipated. There were critical gaps in the information needed to describe the mechanism. Lasers and transistors had recently been discovered, but research technology remained prim primitive so that the means to generate essential information often didn't yet exist. Computers were primitive, slow, and expensive. Software was crude. The internet and email didn't exist. Literature search and review was cumbersome and time-consuming, and statistics were seldom utilized to evaluate data. The details of blood enzyme activity, apoptosis, thrombin receptors, chemokines, and cytokines remained undiscovered. Turbulence remained the greatest mystery of physics and engineering. Stress researchers focused inordinate attention on the relationships of HPA axis hormones, immune activity, and stress, but the nature of these relationships remained unclear. Meanwhile, they came closer to success than they realized when they described the coagulation cascade in the early 1960s. Many suspected its role in tissue repair, but essential information remained lacking. In retrospect, the coagulation cascade can be recognized as the first crude description of the mammalian stress mechanism. The era of stress research produced significant scientific achievements, but the stress mechanism itself defied discovery. The capillary gate and tissue repair theories seemed incompatible, and a single mechanism that could explain both seemed impossible. Celia's theory was useless without a testable mechanism that explained how it worked, and there was no clue of any mechanism that could explain any aspect of Celia's theory. As a result, stress research was largely abandoned and nearly forgotten. Even recently, prominent professors have proclaimed that no single mechanism could possibly explain the multiple manifestations of stress, physiology, and pathology. However, such is not the case. Celia's theory was never disproved, and it remains the simplest and therefore the most promising hope for a theory of medicine. Another 30 years of fresh evidence from unrelated research was needed to enable its discovery. Celia's long-sought stress mechanism was belatedly discovered 60 years after its prediction and 30 years after it was abandoned and forgotten after the recently discovered chimeric nature of factor 8 inspired an intensive six-year review of published literature using advanced computer techniques to screen relevant abstracts on PubMed. Its description remains crude, but it is compatible with existing knowledge 
and it is testable. It confirms all the predictions and expectations of the old stress researchers. It is analogous to the coagulation cascade that was developed during the era of stress research. It incorporates a capillary gate component that is analogous to the intrinsic pathway of the coagulation cascade and capillary gate theory. It incorporates a tissue repair component that is analogous to the extrinsic pathway of the coagulation cascade and tissue repair theory. It explains how stressful tissue disruption and alterations in autonomic balance affect the vascular endothelium and activate the mechanism. As Selya predicted, the stress mechanism enables advanced medical treatments and efficient pharmaceutical development. It crudely explains how DNA directs complex structural development and evolutionary adaptations to environmental circumstances. The old stress researchers would be gratified that their efforts paved the path to discovery, but they would be surprised to learn that Celia's mechanism exceeds the bounds of medicine and confers a comprehensive explanation of the nature and relationships of microbiology, botany, zoology, anatomy, parasitology, embryology, evolution, the Cambrian explosion, taxonomy, paleontology, ethology, and intelligence. Further clarification of the mechanism will eventually enable the interpretation of genomic data with presently inconceivable consequences. I hope you enjoyed this brief introduction to stress theory and that it will inspire you to watch the following series of brief presentations that will be essential to explain the rather complex and counterintuitive operation of Celia's mechanism. Hopefully, these will be understandable for determined laymen as well as medical professionals and researchers. The next slideshow will begin by introducing the mammalian stress mechanism and its three products and explaining their effects. More information and copies of published papers can be obtained via my website, www.stressmechanism.com. Thanks for listening.